Okay, so I hope uh, I'm audible to everyone. Uh, is that okay, or uh, is anyone is having problem in listening my voice? Everyone is able to hear me, right? Okay, silence. I will take it as uh, granted. So everyone is able to hear my voice. Okay. So uh, uh, my name is uh, Venkat, and I have around 11 plus years experience. And uh, around uh, three years, I have uh, uh, experience on RPA tools, especially UI path and group vision. Okay. Uh, okay. As part of uh, this uh, uh, demo, I would uh, cover the basic concepts of RPA, and I would also cover a little bit more details on UI path and group vision. At last, I will also execute one uh, RPA process and show you how to get the data from Amazon. Just to show you, like how automation works. Okay, so so what is RPA? So whenever people, you know, uh, are coming to me and they are simply asking one question: What is this RPA? Why do we need this RPA? We have a lot of technologies in market. We have Java code, so many technologies, like you know, uh, which is not possible using those technologies. And why do we need to use RPA? Those are the questions I am hearing. Okay. So I think you will get the answers to most of those questions. In case if any question is not answered through this presentation, you can ask at last. Okay. RPA is a type of software robot that mimics the activity of a human being carrying, carrying out a task within a process. Okay. Uh, it's not just human. Okay, there are a couple of you know activities wherein you can process uh, using RPA tools. Uh, Whatever human is doing uh, by sitting in front of the computer, he will open uh, some applications and he will type something. He will search Google. He will go to Amazon or Flipkart or he will open some one application. He will verify some data and then he will open another application. He will validate the data in that application. If any mismatches are there, he will go and take and update the data in both applications by taking the third party application or you know any centralized party application. Okay. So those kind of activities also the software robot will do. Okay, how it will do? Uh, I will just talk about you know in the coming slides. The second step is uh, it can do repetitive stuff more quickly, accurately, and tirelessly than humans. Okay? The core idea of RPA is very simple. Rather than having people interact with applications, RPA uses a software robots that drive the application applications with the help of interfaces okay in the same way how human is being interacted with the applications okay uh, when you talk about applications it could be a third party applications wherein the applications may not have the apis exposed okay if the apis are not there so what you can do is you have to open the application uh, with front end we options and then you have to take the data Okay, so for, for that purpose, what RPA will do is without interacting with any third party applications using APIs, it will directly open the application and then it, uh, it will go to corresponding module and it will get all the information. Okay, else if you have an Excel sheet with you or any other portal or database with you, and if you want to uh, interact with those applications or databases, say for example, you have data in one portal, okay. And you have to uh, migrate that data into another portal. Say, for example, the customer is upgrading their databases, upgrading their portals or applications, okay? because those applications are not supporting to the current uh, uh, technologies, the current market requirements. Okay, in that case, what we'll do is you have to migrate the data from one system to another system. It will open the source system and it opens the target system. It will take the data, whatever is in the source system, and then you have to configure the process accordingly so that the RPA robot will migrate the data into target applications. Okay. <clears throat> now the last step, uh, just to uh, you know, uh, just to let you know what is an RPA. Okay. RPA can work with applications that don't expose APIs. It can be used with a broad range of existing software. Okay. RPA is not a physical robot. First of all, that is the uh, main point. I just wanted to you know uh, clarify you. It is a simple a software robot. Okay, uh, you will not see physically that robot anywhere, but whatever the system human is logging in. Okay, similarly, that robot will also logging into your system because you will have create to you have to create credentials for that robot in the system. How you are doing for human? Okay, 
Similarly, whatever the credentials you configured in the system, those you need to map with the orchestrator. Okay, what is that orchestrator is? is orchestrator is a place, it's a web portal, a web based UI wherein it interacts with the process whatever you developed in the studio. Okay, and it interacts with the systems log in there and then whatever the configurations you did in process okay according to that process it will go and open the applications or you know uh, uh, migrate the data or interact with the portals interact with the databases whatever human is doing or whatever the latest technology is doing all those things it will do but all these configurations you have to make it in the process of your path or you know group system or automation anyway whatever the tools okay there are around uh, around 12 to 15 tools are there in the market i'll just talk about those in the next slides Okay. Any questions so far? You just need to understand what is RPA first. If you have any confusions here, you may be uh, you may be you know confused in later stages. Okay, in the later slides, you can ask questions if you have any now itself. Okay, okay. If no questions, I'll go for the next slide. <clears throat> what is the features of RPA? Okay, uh, I just summarized. A uh, couple of features in this slide. There are a couple of other features are also there, but I have not mentioned all those things. Just high level features I just kept in this slide. Okay. Uh, any code you develop, either it could be Java or C or C or SQL, PLS Square or .NET or whatever it is. The first step what you have to do is you have to deploy that code somewhere. Okay. So that all people can access that code and then they can modify and then they can deploy onto the servers. Okay. To have that, we need to have one version control system. Okay. Normally, SVN is the resource, everyone will use that, and some people will use the TFS team foundation server as well. Okay. All the RPA tools in the market have this feature. Okay. Whatever the process you are developing, those processes you can apply onto version control system. Okay. The tools which I am going to talk about are UiPath and Group Vision. Okay. UiPath is having two version control system options. One is SVM and the and second one is TFS. Even Group Vision is also having these uh, uh, version control systems for repository purpose. Okay. The second one is security. <clears throat> if you see a couple of years back, most of the vendors are afraid of taking RPA tools. The reason behind that is if you configure a robot to my bank applications, we don't know what will happen. We don't know how it logins. Because we have to give, it, give the credentials of your bank applications to robots. Okay? How secure it is? How it is keeping confidentiality? So those are the questions rise from the customers. If you see the current RP tools in the market, what assurance they are giving is that if any security breach happen with my RP tools, whatever the penalty you are facing, that penalty we are ready to pay. That kind of assurance RPA vendor is giving now. So that means there is no issue with the security. Okay. Due to that assurance, okay, many vendors, I mean many uh, customers like banking customers, or financial customers, okay, or telecom customers, everyone has started developing their processes. They have started converting their process into RPA process. Okay. And the third one is large group deployment. Say for example, you have thousand customers with you now. Okay, you may be enough to have one robot. Okay, with one robot you can uh, process all your requirements. Tomorrow your business business is growing and you have two thousand, three thousand, twenty thousand, thirty thousand uh, customers like that. In that case, what you have to do is you have to improve your processes. You have to develop more number of processes. Accordingly, you have to deploy more number of RPA robots also. Okay. The large group deployment means here you can deploy number of robots at any time without dying downtime. Okay, that is one best feature of RPA tools. The second one is rule-based exception handling. What is rule-based exception handling? If anyone of you are of Java or C or SQL PLS SQL, you might have heard about exception handling. In Java, try catch. Similarly, you also have try catch activities here. In order to write any code, you can simply drag and drop and then you can implement 
you can implement your rule based exception here the second the, the next one is job scheduling once the process is development is done and you deploy the process to orchestrator wherein robot will take and execute it to execute any process by your robot you have to schedule a job my process has to be executed midnight at 12 o'clock or every day uh, afternoon 12 o'clock or midnight 12 o'clock night 9 o'clock you have to schedule the job accordingly once the job is scheduled automatically robot will pick that job and then it will execute the corresponding process okay that is the purpose of job scheduling what is release environments the moment when you start working on the project the first time the environment what you will work is development environment okay once you done your process you have to deploy this onto server that is development server okay the environment is development environment you release development environment once that is finalized all completing all the um, you know testing and everything then you will go for the testing environment there actual testing will happen you will also have one release environment there again uat production this is how we will have the release environments also in the rpa tools the next one is high elastic scalability scalability in the sense like you can increase the bots at any time you can decrease the bots at any time there is no restriction that you need to uh, down the servers in production like that without downtime you can enhance the or you can uh, increase the number of robots or number of processors okay uh, at any time <coughs> work queues basically you may have multiple robots uh, in place in the production environment what you have to do is you have a data and that data may be accessible to multiple robots say for example one transaction is there the transaction has come into queue one robot has picked that and the same transaction should not pick by another robot for that purpose the queue management is there okay <clears throat> so why do we why do we need to choose rpa what is the benefits of rpa because of these benefits we need to choose an rpa these benefits are not limited to uh, uh, to the benefits what i kept here there are 30 to 40 benefits are there i will share those details later but i just kept you know high level details you now where we can just discuss about it okay the first one is increased efficiency okay comparatively with human and the bot the efficiency is more uh, on the bot side around 30 to 50 percent efficiency is there okay if i give an excel sheet to user how you will access that excel and how you will enter the data into portal okay so it we may take five minutes to enter one excel row or say for example two minutes okay the bot can do that within one or two seconds okay and the second one is improved accuracy okay. how you can get accuracy using bot see for example you have an excel sheet to user and i ask them to enter the data into uh, order entry form to order uh, i mean order and reporter what you will do you will take each cell and then you will go and enter into some field at that time he may take wrong data or he may take right data and enter into wrong field that chances are there but bot cannot do that because whatever uh, the process you implement accuracy whatever you keep there in the process it will do same thing it will not do anything other than that okay so the next one is reduced cycle time the average handling time or reduced time cycle time is same okay any issue comes the handling time is less compared to human okay and the richer data analytics okay if you see around six months back we don't have any analytics features in uh, rpa tools now if you see a couple of other features are getting added especially in ua path okay a cognitive analytics features are getting added that means those are getting integrated with RPA tools and artificial intelligence related capabilities are also integrating like Google Deep Learning, IBM Chatbots, there are a couple of AI tools. With those AI tools also, these RPA tools are getting integrated. Okay. So in that way you can see richer data analytics and the lower operational cost, the next one. Okay. The operational cost is lower because instead of putting multiple people, 10 people, 20 people to operate your business, okay, one bot can do that. In that way you can that bot is also with very less cost so that way you will get more benefits in the operations okay higher employee productivity and satisfaction the productivity is always more because the robot is fast and 24 by 7 availability okay and the satisfaction also very good because there is no 
mistakes in entering data or in doing process okay and the efficiency is also more okay and the next one is redefine business workflows okay based on the requirement uh, technologies are keep on changing today they develop one process because of technology changes we need to upgrade and then we need to change the process and multiple duplicate process will also be there okay we can redefine those process by using rp okay and the next one is faster time to markets okay uh, if you see uh, the java technologies or whatever technologies you are using to implement any uh, uh, requirement or processes it is time taking process if you take rp2 simple drag and drop you can do within this or within weeks in agile process mode okay the next one is scale up or down easily you can increase the number of bots or decrease number of bots based on requirements okay and the next one is better manage repeatable tasks if any repeatable task is very simple you can create one pass and give it to bot bot will do it instead of putting 10 20 people like that if transactions are more you have to, you have to keep on increase the resources you don't know when resource will leave the company because repeatable task always you know they will have less experience guys only okay less experience guys always they will look for more salaries and they will keep on changing the companies okay but robot will not leave like that okay if you pay the license robot will be there always with you and the next one is easier agile process design okay one process you can deploy and go live and take another process monthly one process or two months in uh, one process in two months like that in order to wait like what all method projects and the next one is uh, reduce implementation tasks risks okay there is no risk because you not write any code you simply drag and drop and develop your process okay i just couple of for you know uh, areas of rp development um, these are not the uh, only areas where you can implement the rpa i just kept a couple of you know uh, areas just to make you understand okay uh, it the major areas i can just kept for it is password the resetting system maintenance data migration entry or data cleansing data consolidation data analytics testing all areas even this testing will be there in all areas okay even rpa also you can use as testing automation tool like the q2b or selenium tools are there right there are a lot of Uh, logic you have implemented a uh, selenium tools at qtp but with minimal uh, uh, effort we can do rpa process for testing as well okay and finance i just kept some something here supply chain i just kept something here okay and people management banking bpo okay uh, so these uh, the bullet points what i kept is not limited but i just kept a couple of things you know just to make you understand like, what all areas are there you know for implement uh, for implementing an rpa process okay now this is very interesting slide okay uh, uh there are people asking you know, how many tools in the market which which is the best tool uh, which tool is having good market these are the questions i am getting okay the left side are the tools in the market okay uh, there are so many small small tools are there but the, the companies are they are developing their own tools uh, with their own purposes of taking license from other tools so i am not included those uh, rp tools here i just kept a couple of Tools here around around how many are there around twelve uh, tools I kept here. Okay. The first three tools are the major tools in the market, okay. And the UI path and Blue Prism uh, are the tools which I would cover as part of my training. And automation anyway is also good, okay. Uh, if you see all the tools, if I just wanted to compare uh, the technology categories wise. the right side you can see the screenshot here this is the screenshot i just got from the gartner report from the google this screen, this screenshot is around 6 months screenshot okay so i have to collect the latest uh, screen uh, you know just to see where is uh, ui path and automation anywhere or blue prism in terms of uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning and you know cognitive capabilities okay if you see uh, uh, this technology wise uh, comparison the ui path rated 3.67 average rating okay uh the technology categories wise bot development and core functions okay the ui pass is 3.25 automation anywhere is 3.70 it is more and if you see blue prism is 2.50 if you see blue prism is less uh, if when you compare with the ui path or automation in most of the cases but more in security and uh, deployment and governance this is 6 months back if you see now in ui path security is also more than for now okay okay and and whatever the tools i mentioned the left side 12 tools are for all these 12 tools i just kept the rating 
uh, technology wise like you know control room is nothing but here is the uh, the web based uh, tool where is uh, wherein uh, the robot will take the process and execute your process the box will be available in the control room here the control room name is uh, for the group vision and the for orchestrator is the uh, name for you know controlling bots and processes in your path okay and rpa analytics like you know uh, in six months back no one is talking about analytics spot or you know artificial intelligence capabilities in uh, rpa tools but now if you see uh, even uh, ua path automation anywhere and groupism is also started putting some artificial intelligence capabilities into it but ua path is uh, very aggressive in uh, adding the uh, features of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning concepts along with the uh, cognitive features also okay <clears throat> let me go to next slide any questions here guys please ask me you can start me at any time if you have any questions okay okay if no questions i'll just go for the next slide intelligent process automation so i was just you know uh, Uh, using a word called artificial intelligence a couple of times in the previous slides. Okay, uh, how you will make uh, this robotic process automation into intelligent process automation? Okay, if you see uh, the uh, the latest uh, market, okay, uh, RPA is like you know uh, more now. Okay, and if you see couple of after couple of months, okay, because this RPA is getting integrating with uh, artificial intelligence related tools. Okay. It will be in different phase. Okay, um, now you may be seeing. Let's say, for example, uh, uh, you may not be able to assess a couple of things uh, which you know uh, are part of data science. Okay, um, those data science related things are also coming to you know RPA integration. Okay, so you can see more features in RPA in the down the line. If you see UA path now, it is having almost uh, some of the uh, cognitive features. And is also integrating with the uh, one of the IBM uh, artificial intelligence tool, which is IBM Chatbot. Okay, still there are some improvement is going on on the UI part side. Okay, so now before I go and talk about this artificial intelligence related capabilities with RPA, I just wanted to talk about a couple of points here. Now how it is going to integrate with the uh, the uh, the latest technology related tech, uh, tools, that is AI and machine learning related. Okay, what is an intelligent process? IPA refers to the application of uh, artificial intelligence and new technologies, including computer vision, deep learning, cognitive automation, and machine learning to robotic process automation. Okay, these are the combinations coming or uh, integrating with the uh, RPA tools. Most of the RPA vendors are keep on discussing with these uh, artificial intelligence related vendors. Okay, and whatever the uh, the developments going on in artificial intelligence, everything is they are trying to integrate with RPA. Okay. And the next point is integration with third-party cognitive services like Google, okay, uh, Google Deep Learning, IBM Watson, Microsoft, and Abbey. So there are so many uh, you know, developments going on artificial intelligence, machine learning, and natural language processing. So those tools are getting integrated with RPA now, okay. And AI, a cognitive journey, will be offering more natural language processing and machine learning services on cloud. Okay, even RPA also been deploying in cloud. Okay. Whatever the major uh, cloud technologies in the market, like Amazon Web Services, AWS, or Microsoft Azure, okay, so RPA is uh, is deploying on those uh, cloud services also. Okay, so <clears throat> I just took one small example, okay, uh, and, and and I just wanted you know what is the value addition if RPA is getting integrated with AI. I just kept one slide here just to make you understand. Okay, let's consider a financial institution. Adding a new customer. Say, for example, a new customer you have to add it for the uh, uh, for this uh, you know to do service to the customer. Okay, this process involves extensive coordination between staff reviewing the necessary documentation and the customer supplying it. Okay, <clears throat> it involves many uh, uh, many uh, tasks that are ideal uh, for RPA. The first one is verification. The second one is review of data against policies, and the last one is KYC verification. Say document ID. How the document ID will be verified? If you see the customer submits the required documentation in person or through a smartphone or app, smartphone app. Okay. Sometimes some people will submit the documents in online. Some people will submit the documents uh, 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 through app. Okay.
Okay, there are several options. Okay, what RPA will do in this case? RPA using the document classification it will identify this and sort the documents and notifying staff for missing documentation. Say for example, I need other. Okay, I need pan. I need water ID. There are some mandated documents, right? Say even if you take uh, uh, any uh, uh, bank account. Okay, what are documents required? There are some mandated documents required. Okay. If some maybe some documents missing, right? RPA can do that. Why A is required here? Okay, you can see here RPA can be trained through a learn by example approach. Say for example, one documentation is missed. You just train the RPA saying that the documentation format is like this. Okay, some different format has come. RPA cannot identify. What is artificial intelligence? You have to make machine understand some uh, classifications. Based on that classification, even though the document naming is not proper properly uh, arranged, the A will identify that and it will give it to RPA. RPA can process it. Okay. And the next one is customer data entry. Bank staff enters the data from customer supply documents into the banking system. Okay. Once the, okay, whatever the data coming from the customer, they will enter into uh, uh, banking system. Okay. What RPA will do and why do we need AI here? RPA using automated data extraction through OCR because the document whatever is submitting by customers are scanned copies. Okay, scanned copies in the sense um, it's not the letters typed by the um, through your system. Okay, what will happen is it's, a, it's an image. To read an image, we need OCR technologies. Microsoft OCR or Google OCR. OCR is nothing optical character recognition. Okay, locates and enters the data into software. Okay, RPA can benefit from OCR. Location of this data vary with the exceptions handled by the bank staff through manual data entry. They know, okay, if this exception comes, what to do. Okay, there are a couple of classifications. If you update all those classifications to AA, AA will identify that and give it to RPA. So in that way, you can get benefits from the AA. Just a couple of examples I just kept here. Okay. Now, the next one is uh, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, convert your process completely into digital operations, the well, 60% of work will be in robotic process automation tools like UA Path, Blue Vision, Automation Anywhere, and cognitive RPA features are also there. A couple of tools like Automation Anywhere and UA Path, and chatbots also 15% work will be there. 15% work will be cognitive RPA, and the remaining 10% work will be in AI. Okay, the more work will be there in the 60% work will be there in the RPA, and the remaining. 40% work will be there with the AI and chart boss and cognitive RPA. Okay. I just kept one screenshot here just to make you understand before the latest technologies comes, how the process is there, just to assign a role to user. And after writing all the Java code or applications deployed, how the scripted business process automation will be here and how the robotic automation will do. Okay. The only difference here is that in the manual process, okay, uh, once a manager sends an email to a person to add a role to a particular user, he will log into a system, he will check for a particular role in the particular component, and then he will check whether the role is assigned to that user or not, and then he will add the role if it is not assigned, or otherwise he will send an email. Similarly, you will do the same job using uh, the uh, deployed application interfaces using Java and the uh, you know web, uh, web logic, okay? wherein. Uh, the robot will not, uh, you know, uh, write any code. It will simply log on to your application. It will search for, you know, whether that user is having that role or not. If it is not having, it will go out there and send it an email to customer, to manage it. Okay. No code, no human intervention, or everything is automated without writing any code. Just a comparison. Okay. <clears throat> now, in this slide, I'll just talk about, you know. Uh, uh, the high level uh, architecture and its components of uh, UA path. Okay. Um, there are three components in UA path. Okay. The first one is uh, UA path studio and the second one is uh, UA path orchestrator. Third one is robots. UA path studio is one component. Okay. Basically that is to develop your process. Once you develop and deploy your process, that process will be stored in the UA path orchestrator, which is web based uh, portal. Okay. That UA path orchestrator will have uh, uh, robots deployed and the process what you deploy and the robots and process configuration 
and the environment configurations will also be there, like development environment, testing environment, production environment, UAT environment, all those environments will configure in your path uh, orchestrator here. Yeah? And the bot will be sitting in one of the system. Okay, that system will be integrated with your your path orchestrator because uh, your robot will always you know interact with the third party applications and uh, you know the process what you deploy into orchestrator here. Okay. And there are two types of robots here. One is attended and the second one is unattended. Attended robot is basically to monitor the existing processes, to monitor what bots are executing, what bots are sleeping, what bots are disconnected, and what process is proper, what logs are deploying, uh, and if issues are any notification, give it to a person, so-and-so bot is sleeping, so-and-so bot is not working, something like that. All those things will happen by these attended robots. Okay, unattended robots are will, is basically to execute your process what you deploy and interact with third party applications. Okay, now these are just you know uh, the skin shots of uh, UA Path Studio and Orchestrator. Okay, uh, the UA Path Studio is basically to develop your process and then you know whatever the requirement uh, uh, you got from the customer and deploy and to uh, the Orchestrator which is in the right side. Okay, the left side is the uh, UA Path Studio. Which is you know it's having start, design, execute, and setup button. And design is basically the area where you will see the activities to develop your process. Okay. And the right side one is the orchestrator window. You can see uh, the robot configurations here and the process here. And the assets are basically to you know to configure your uh, credentials or you know any inputs to process. And the queues are basically to process uh, you know, transactions uh, by taking from queues and uh, you know the bot will execute that. The schedules are basically to schedule jobs. The jobs are basically whatever the jobs coming into that jobs will be stored here. And the logs are also you can see if any failures or if any successful uh, process executions, all those things you can see. And the number of process, how many processes are there, how many assets are there, how many queues are there, how many schedules are there. The same numbers it will be represented in the different colors also here. Okay. The green color is basically uh, the bots available, how many bots available, and the, how many bots are busy is the orange color. How many bots are disconnected is the gray color here, and the this red color is basically basically unresponsive of bots. Okay, on the right side also you can similarly see the jobs status are also here. Okay, <clears throat> the next tool I would uh, cover is uh, Blue Prism. Uh, it's architecture and you know high level components. So it is having a uh, high level uh, only uh, three components. One is studio and the uh, control room and the database. The first component is again is divided into two parts uh, because it's a, pro it's a studio. The studio is again having the object studio and process studio. Object studio is basically a uh, group vision guys will use some objects wherein uh, it helps you to interact with the uh, portals or you know uh, databases or you know Windows applications like Word, Excel, all those things. In addition to that, if you need any objects also, you can develop using uh, object studio. Customized uh, objects also you can develop. Process Studio is basically to develop your process using Object Studio uh, objects. And once you develop your process, you deploy onto Blue Vision database. And the control room is the place where you where you'll configure all, all your queues, schedules, uh, jobs, logs, and uh, robots. All those things you will configure in control room. System Manager is basically to for configurations like managing credentials, managing users, managing queues. All those you know configurations part, administration part you can do in system here. Once you deploy the process here, the process will be sitting in Blue Prism, and the robot will come from the control room and take the process and execute it. When the process is executed, it interacts with the various VBOs, whatever is there deployed in the server. Okay, that VBO will interact with the uh, applications using business logic, whatever implemented in the process here. Okay, these are the high-level screenshots of uh, Blue Prism. The first one is Studio, and again, Studio is having Process Studio and Object Studio. The control room is the place where you can configure all parts and execution parts and queues and schedules also you can see. The right side is the system manager which is like you know admin related things. Yeah. And as part of my uh, training, okay, around uh, 40, uh, 40 to 45 use cases I will uh, uh, explain. Okay, Every class will have one use case. Okay. I will give just five minutes or ten minutes brief about the use case and then I will implement the use case in uh, UA Path and Blue Vision. Okay, so by taking these use cases, you can implement the process in any domain. Uh, it could be telecom domain or banking or finance or BPO or whatever the domain. Okay, these use cases will be helpful for you.
okay and couple of three to four use cases will be on programming concepts and all the remaining 20 to 22 concepts will be on the the real time concepts like you know how to migrate the data how to integrate the applications how to send an email automatically how to um, uh, digitalize the pdf documentations all those uh, things will be covered as part of these 25 use cases uh, in the ui path and blue prism also around 15 to 20 classes blue prism is a little bit small tool because um, and that is also having a coding concept we have to write the code for a couple of things that's why i'm not suggesting you know blue prism for most of the guys Flower is you know having dotnet knowledge i'm suggesting blue prism we don't have any coding knowledge i'm suggesting we are here okay as part of my training what all benefits I will be giving is the material I will give for your path and group vision and the daily class notes also I will give and the daily class recordings also I will give you and 200 plus interview questions I will give. If any new questions are adding with different questions like you know people are going for interviews and if any new questions are identified I will add to that excel sheet and give it to you. The questions would be on your path and group vision and generic questions also will be there and how to handle interview also those questions will also be there in that. Yeah. And I will support until you get the job. Okay. Let's say, for example, you went for you know interview. Okay. You found new questions. You will call me. Okay. I will help you to answer your question. Then I will add those questions into my Excel and give it to you. You can go for next interview so that you can get job easily. Okay. Yeah, real time use cases. If anything is asking the interviews, okay, if you can tell me the use case, I will include that use case also in the next coming class. And you can join that class also. Okay. Okay. Once you pay the fee, you can join any number of classes. If need. Okay. Okay, so now I just kept one uh, uh, automation. Okay, uh, say for example, you are searching for automation, uh, sorry, Amazon uh, for Samsung mobiles. Okay, uh, uh, without checking every day, you just want to get that list uh, to your email okay, automatically. Okay, we can implement that. Okay, what I did now is I just you know uh, log into uh, open the uh, browser for uh, uh, Amazon portal. You just type Amazon portal like Amazon.in and search for it uh, your uh, mobile, uh, whatever the mobiles you want, your Samsung mobiles are, you know, whatever the mobiles you want, you just search in search box and it will do some uh, some uh, list of, uh, you know, mobile list, mobiles with the name, fast, rating, so many things. Those things will get into Excel sheet automatically using the UA path. Okay, I just kept one uh, automation just to show you. Okay, let me execute that and show you and then we'll go for the questions part. Okay, so I just developed one uh, uh, Amazon automation here. Okay, now what I'm doing here is that what it will do, say for example, if I go to Amazon, Amazon.in, Amazon.in, okay, here I will search for Samsung mobiles, something like this. Okay, now I have this many Samsung mobiles. Okay, what I have to do is I need the name of each mobile like this in an excel sheet okay in an excel sheet like this so the first column is mobile name and cost i want the data like this okay mobile name is this and cost of this mobile is 7990 7990 okay 7990 okay i want the entire list whatever is coming in the uh, amazon here how I will get and I want the URL whatever the URL coming here also okay open new tab and take URL that URL also you can take okay so that automation I am going to execute now and show you how it works okay so what I did here is that I just you know created one excel sheet here okay uh, actual data whatever data is coming I will keep it here the mobiles which are less than 7000 I will just keep in this uh, tab here the mobiles fast which is greater than 7000 I will keep it here okay the data if you see here data what you are getting is in Amazon here uh, sometimes 7 comma 990 some spaces are also there before and between all the spaces will also be removed and keep it proper and then update in the excel sheet okay I'm just closing my uh, all these things here I'm just closing this okay there is no internet explorer open here if I go and execute the process the data will be populated into my excel sheet here okay there is no data here okay in all these three tabs I'm just closing this Excel sheet now. Okay, I'm closing this Excel sheet also now. I don't want this dummy data. If I go and execute this, it will fill the data in the Excel sheet within seconds. To do this activity, human will take minimum 10 to 15 minutes, even to enter 100 rows. 
I'm just taking an approximate uh, number. Okay, now the data is executed. Within uh, this uh, 12 seconds, the data is uh, captured. Let me go and try what data is updated. Okay, if you see here, the data, whatever it is in the, in the Amazon, okay, exactly got the data, all the data. Okay, the first mobile is Samsung on 5 Pro Gold, 6,990. Second mobile is again 7,990. So two mobiles are there with different cars. Okay, similarly you can see all these cars. If you go and see here less than 700, it is free. Whatever the cost less than 700. If you see here, the data is, you know, comma, lot of space are there before and after, sometimes dots are also there. It is removed all the dots and everything, and then I just kept the proper data here, which is less than 7,000. These many mobiles are there, which is less than 7,000 cost. And mobiles, whoever, whoever is having greater than 7,000 is loaded in different sheets. Within 11 seconds, it filled all the data. That's how you get the more accuracy and efficiency with the RPA tools. Okay. And if you have any questions, please proceed. So that's all about my demo. Okay. Um, in case if you want to contact me, you can contact me at venkat.rpa.ia at gmail.com on my WhatsApp number 9618671380. Okay. Uh, 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 everyday class recordings and you know uh, class notes i'll be sending it to your emails okay okay please proceed for questions now guys any questions there should be some questions hi venkat ram yeah. here so will it be automated any kind of applications it means windows applications web based applications anything yeah so uh, so windows based applications like it can interact with many windows like windows 7 or windows 8 9 or 10 okay whatever the applications you have in your windows machine like it could be word or it could be a notepad it could be excel okay a calendar whatever the application it will interact we have those uh, activities also in your path and both uh, group is also and it will also interact with the portals like as i said to migrate the data okay say for example i have data in one source application that is portal okay if you configure a bot uh, to a process okay in that process you have to implement all these steps like you know uh, just open the explorer like for amazon automation how i open internet explorer similarly it will open the internet explorer okay and it will log in into application if you have you have to provide your credentials in in uh, orchestrator assets Okay, that credentials will be used to log into your portal and then it will go to a particular module also. Okay, from that module, whatever the data, say for example, you have data in Excel sheet, you have to submit the data into your portal. It will take the data from Excel sheet row by row and it will go and enter into your portal. Okay, say for example, you have data in database and it could be Oracle database or Microsoft SQL or whatever the database. It can interact with the database, it takes the data and then enter into the portal also. And there might be some other scenarios like where you have the data from Excel, you have to migrate into database. That is also possible. And some cases you have the data in portal and you have to migrate into database. That is also possible. And there are two applications which you have to integrate, but those two applications are not having the APIs exposed. How you integrate those? Okay. It will open the application. It takes the data, corresponding data from the source application. It will go and verify in the target applications. And it will mismatch, if any mismatches, it will uh, update the data also without writing any Java code, without writing, uh, deploying any applications. With simple process and one software robot, you can do that. Okay, so it's specifically for data related uh, automation, right? Uh, other than data, what automations you're expecting now? So for example, I have a CRM application. Yeah. Just uh, we are doing manual testing. Okay. So just I want to uh, automate all these scenarios, whatever. Yes, yes it will work. It will work. It will work. If you log into, uh, I, I, I have given one uh, use case for the sales of this, you know, salesforce.com, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is uh, even you can go on online, you can register and you can try for one use case also. Okay. Uh, it will log in into your SFDC. Okay. Uh, it interacts with the, whatever the modules for customer you, uh, you configured there. Okay. You can take the data and you can enter the data in case if you want to validate, say manual testing means what you will do. You will take some source data and then you will verify whether it is correctly entered or not, right? So it will take the data from the Excel sheet, go to that particular field where the same data is entered or not. That validation is also possible. Whatever you are uh, using the testing tools like Serenium or QTP, 
all those processes you can implement in rpo okay. with a simple process development no need to write the code just simple drag and drop process development you can implement the testing strategies also okay thank you welcome any other questions well uh, venkat this is rajesh yeah rajesh go ahead yeah uh, so if there is no questions i can then start something yeah Proceed, Rajesh. In case of any questions, they can ask later also. Yeah, uh, this is Rajesh Pachadi. So we are a startup company. We started company in name called Fikki Commerce Private Limited. Uh, but uh, in we are as a Amazon uh, as a part of like Amazon, they are developing lot of tools, right? So we are also developing lot of tools. So basically, we find out the issue between uh, after academics and uh, getting the job is difficult nowadays. Most of the people. so we are developing one product name called career 3s so it will give more uh, flexibility to the companies uh, to hire the right talented people and the same time the people who are completed academic education uh, they can come and our portal and they can uh, get uh, suitable training uh, uh, with the whatever the they want to uh, gain the knowledge from the Uh, real time people as well as trading and uh, the job opening details so this this portal we are going to uh, publish uh, soon uh, in a couple of months so we are developing other other products as well so we need people to work on big data blockchain and uh, even rpa as well so uh, to get the people right people uh, for the new company is difficult so we started this training i hope lot of people already registered with us as a fikweb.com so they entered and uh, uh, registered for this course so uh, if a, anyone as a fresher or uh, anybody want to get the internship on rpa especially i mentioned for this group rpa because we need people on internship rpa as well as we will give the guidance and assistance for jobs so we already uh, uh, we already did lot of uh, empanelment with the it companies and even the um, majorly the startup companies so people who are looking for very serious and career in it so please uh, learn something seriously and uh, venkat sir and avazels are very serious to provide job assistance as well as lot of uh, interview guidance so please whoever uh, want to continue in internship please come to our office visit it so and provide it we will provide you system and the scenarios whatever it you can complete the internship as well uh, in parallelly the training so this is the this is the from fik so if you want continue uh, if for training as well as you want to continue only training that is also fine if you want to looking for training plus internship please come and join with us and the work real time scenarios and develop own products get real time knowledge and grab the opportunity because nowadays getting job is very difficult because lot of technological challenges are coming many new new skills in the market to get all the new skills one place is very difficult so so our product is having lot of technologies you can come and learn and even explore more and get the job uh, with help of uh, Uh, our sales so that is the from my end so thank you uh, venkat sir so whoever register with us please uh, send a mail again once again and feedback and uh, whatever your expectations from us so we are trying our best to provide better quality of training as well as placement thank you yeah, thanks uh, thanks rajesh uh, so rajesh and myself uh, working together guys and you know once you learn the rpa tool uh, rp or any other you know training from even rajesh also uh, rajesh also helping guys from my end you know just you know uh, sending profiles to you know some other companies like uh, where is having some touch with uh, different companies okay once the training is over uh, if you feel that some students are good we are you know sending profiles to those companies as well okay hi venkat this is koteshwara yeah koteshwara go ahead so this is the first time uh, i am listening about rpa so what i understand from your presentation is uh, it can automate any process uh, like uh, say it could be a, a development process it could be a build process it could be a testing process 
uh, anything uh, am i right uh, development in the sense like uh, in a software development are you thinking like what, you know what i mean is agile agile methodology Okay. Yeah, agile methodology is there, but building and all, uh, we need to see whether how we can do. Building means what is uh, building you are expecting. Here. Build release, build releases. Yeah, releases that is there, that right. is there. But uh, this uh, this uh, RPA is not meant for you know writing codes and you know develop your tools. It's yeah, I got it. Yeah. Other than that, the testing part it will cover, the the data migration it will cover, integration part it will cover. So all the most of the automation to cover, including email automations and PDF automations. Okay, okay. Thank you. So how, how many days it will take you on the complete course? Uh, 30 to 40 days, uh, Koteshwara. Okay. So 40 to 45 classes. If people are okay, you know, to join Saturday, two or one or two hours extra, mm. I can finish it in within 30 days. Okay. Sometimes uh, it will be completed within 30 days, 35 days, 40 days. Max 40 days I have to finish it out. So in the chat, somebody asking. Uh, uh, okay, let me see. Yeah. yeah. Okay, if you want to practice at home, then what about tools and license? Okay. So UA path, uh, I will help you guys to install. Okay, we have three months uh, free, and even you can extend after that also. Okay, I'll help you in installation. We will discuss about that separately. Okay, we will connect with the uh, team viewer, and then I will install the. Uh, software in your system any other questions yeah we will discuss in offline about that there is a process to install it okay we will discuss about uh, uh, both your path and provision Any other questions, guys? I'm expecting so many questions because uh, many people are new to RPA. Okay, if no questions, I'll stop uh, class for now. Okay. Um, so what I'm expecting from you guys is that uh, you 